I've featured crimping tools in the past, I'm pretty sure, but certainly I use a lot of these sort of what I refer to as the Molex style crimps. Now, it's kind of wrong to refer to them as Molex style crimps. I'll show you why. Here is the official Molex crimp from one of my preferred suppliers, Rapid Electronics in the UK. And they have an option. You can buy the Molex ones. Note, incidentally, it says, due to recent global events, the UK may experience distribution and disruption in the coming weeks. That's the coronavirus thing that was happening in China at the time of making this video. Uh, but the official Molex connector, they're about, uh, if you buy five, they're about 13 pence each. And the crimps, you get the connector, but you don't get the actual little crimps with it. They have to be bought separate. That's quite common in this, this sort of connector market. So the crimps are about four pounds per 100. So that would cost another eight pence uh, plus VAT for the two terminals that went into that. So I tend to use uh, JYK versions from Rapid. And in this case, well, let's go up to the quantity of 100. They're two pence each in quantities of 100. What was the uh, Molex cost in quantities of 100? 10 pence each versus two pence each. So a significant saving, but they also sell and it's worth mentioning here, JYK H2500. 2500 seems to be the name of these connectors. I've seen them on eBay. The ones on eBay were somewhat different. I think I prefer the rapid electronic ones. This is swamping out just because of the light, dark background with uh, all the crimping tools and bright. Even That's even with the sort of off white paper here. But the JYK uh, terminals, you get them in a reel of a thousand. And it's about, uh, say, £17 plus VAT for a thousand. Your reel of a thousand looks like this. It's cardboard reel with the crimps wound on alternately with a paper tape. And uh, then that just gets fed into the crimping machine. Or in the case of our use of it, we could just uh, fold the crimps off the carrier metal strip that they come on. I get through a lot of these. I've got through several of those rolls, which is unbelievable given they all had to be hand crimped. Um, the crimping tool I used... It, the one that Rapid are selling now is different. It came in at £28.45 plus VAT. It's a ratchet crimping tool, but you'll see me using this green one. This is the one I use for those. It's a rock-solid tool. It has crimped oh, thousands of those connectors. They're very good. I've never had a problem with it. I've been looking at other tools, though, and... Some of them are crap, and some of them are very good. Now, what's the best way to proceed with this video? The best way to proceed with this video is to show you a little doodle of what happens when you crimp a connector. So let's bring this notepad in. I'm just going to tame it down just a tad because it is quite ferocious. These connectors typically have, in the case of the Molex GYK type connector, they've got the spring contact that looks like this. It comes along and it folds up and then underneath just to give extra springiness. And there's also a little tag that sticks, a little tang that sticks out the bottom, and that's what latches it into the connector housing. You have the wing that will fold round the actual wire, and then you have a slightly bigger wing that will fold round the insulation. So when the insulation is put in, it gets put into about here, and then the strands get put into about there. And when you crimp this, the crimping tool has something that looks a bit like the McDonald's golden arch at the top. It's You may be getting deja vu, by the way, because I, I did feature something similar to this in a recent video. And this is quite precise. It has to be made to good quality. Uh, it's not something you can just bang out with a standard milling machine as such. It, it tends to be done by fairly specialist processes like uh, spark erosion and stuff like that. But you also have uh, the other side of that that mates into that is the little sort of cup very slight curve and when you sit the crimp on this it pushes it up against those arches and as it pushes them up against the arches say for instance this, this is the crimp being pushed up it curls the those wings round onto the wire or onto the insulation and if you over crush those it will potentially damage the wire. If you undercrush them, it won't grip the wire properly. And the first, uh, the first crap crimping tools that are worth featuring, the ones getting out of the way, 
are the SN-28B, which are sold widely on eBay from different sellers, different manufacturers, and they're sold for use with the DuPont style connectors. You know the DuPont little tiny sort of Arduino-ish style connectors is the best way to describe them. And you can put a pin or a socket into the same sort of housing. And the tolerance in these things is absolutely terrible. Uh, these ones, I'll squeeze them both. I don't know if you can see the tolerance. Can you see that? Uh, let's uh, zoom down and you might see this bear. Let's see if I can actually just grab the zoom here. Can you see the tips there? That I've got them squeezed fully shut and there's a massive tolerance, particularly the one at the front, which is supposed to be the one for these size connectors. And likewise on the back, let's see if I can just angle this the one that crimps the actual the the uh, wire itself, the tolerance between those is different too. And crimping the DuPont crimps and other crimps with these, I found that one tool would crimp it so tightly that when you pulled the did the pull test to see if it came out connector, the wire physically snapped. The other one, the wire just came out the crimp. It didn't crimp it properly. Very, very tricky. I'm sure the SN28B is designed for something, but I don't think it's really designed for the DuPont crimps. Let's get these out of the way. They're crap. They're not the ones I recommend. Where's the box? Where's the box? I'll just stick them down there. On the floor. I'll also put this one out of the way because it is my known good one. I'll just stuff it over there because these are the ones we're really interested in now. The next up for scrutiny is the SN-01BM. It is not too bad, and let me demonstrate what I mean by not too bad. I shall use this particular set of wire strippers that came with this crimping tool as a sort of like, buy the crimping tool, get the strippers. Interesting. I'll strip that just a tiny bit more. And I shall do one of the Monax connectors because they're all very similar. So... Other things worthy of note here, and I shall doodle that down afterwards. When you first get one of these, you're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to get a feel for using this. It's not just a case of get it and start banging wires into crimps. You're going to have to get a feel for inserting the crimp into it and the positioning, particularly in these ratchet ones that do both uh, crimps at once. So that's that wire, in that uh, crimp inserted in. I shall slide this wire into the end of that, push it forward if I can get it to go in. Ah, uh, it may not go in easily because uh, I may have just squeezed that just a bit too tight so far. Well, that is not going in. I've splayed the wires a bit. This is where things will go wrong. This is what happens when you're using a crimping tool you're not really used to using. There it goes, there it goes. And you crimp it. And it produces a fairly decent crimp. Now, the way I'm going to test this is I'm going to stuff it into here. And two things can happen. When I pull this crimp back out, so it goes in and clicks, either the wire is going to come out the crimp or the crimp is going to, the little tang is going to distort and pull the crimp out. The tang distorted and pulled the crimp out, so that's actually a very good crimp. I don't know how the quality is going to vary between these. And also it's worth noting that one crimp does, one crimp tool does not do all. And that is especially relevant to the DuPont style connectors, uh, which have a really unusually large uh, cable crimping section, which uh, if you put it into this crimping tool, let me get it right way around here. If you put it into this crimping tool and you have the strain relief section of the crimp, then it's only going to crimp about half of the actual the wire retaining crimp. I mean, it will still crimp it. Let me just demonstrate that. Let's get the stripping tool and strip some wire. And I shall shove that in there and crimp it, if I can get it in. If I just push that out even further. Oh, that looks all right. Crimp. It has literally, I mean, it's worked, but it's only crimped half that crimp. How is that going to go with the housing? Or am I going to have to re-crimp it to get the other half? Let's slide it in. It kind of clicked. It pulled out, but I'm not going to blame it in this instance because I... Uh, it's actually, you know what I am, because it's not crimped that down, and that is actually possibly having an effect on the little latch gripping down in that. But that's okay, because there is something that's going to save the day here, and it's a fairly affordable crimper, which is good. Uh, next up is, well, the Engineer PA09 is quite famous. It's used a lot by the sort of, like, the drone lovers, 
and the modelers who are connecting the small connectors for their uh, radio control stuff. This tool will cost, this very simple manual crimper costs £32. It comes from Japan. I have to say, I was not enamoured by it. It's not the best tool for the job. I have tried lots of tools. I was not impressed by that one for a couple of reasons. It comes very dry. I suppose lubricant would help there. For Because uh, one of the things I've discovered is that the crimps actually physically stick into it. So let's go for let's go for one of these connectors then. So I shall go into the it's got multiple positions. You're going to have to crimp the strain relief in a wider position. So I'm going to put it into what I find one of the most universally useful positions, which is the 1.6 millimeter position. And I'm going to put the wire into it. And I'm going to crimp that. But then I'm going to move along and then I'm going to crimp the other half of that because otherwise it's not all crimped. Now it is. And then I'm going to have to move along again. And this is where the crimp is now stuck firmly into the, the engineer tool. And I found this. This is annoying. Maybe this is where oil will help. It just seems to have a very rough surface. And the crimp's stick in with such force that when I try making my Molexi style connectors in it, uh, they are often distorted and won't go into the housing properly until you've straightened them out again. This is a manual tool. It's absolutely possible to over crush it to the point you sever the cables or under crush it to the point you don't grip them. It's all a matter of getting a feel. Let's try this. Let's straighten it out. It's bent. That's what I'm talking about. It just, I'm not impressed in that for some reason. It's just got little, it just seems that it's very grippy. It doesn't want to let go of the connectors. This one has gone in. This one has been mashed. Okay, I've... Obviously, oh, what have I done? No, you know what? I crimped the wrong bit there. I was a dick. Right, anyway, now <laughs> I've screwed up. I crimped, I crimped the restraint bit. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I found that when I used the Engineer P09, I'm sure it would be versatile. I think it could do the little lick of oil in here. Other than that, it is a fairly useful unit. It can do a wide range of the connectors, but it is very much you have to do one bit at a time. But there's nothing wrong with that. Next tool, uh, the IWIS uh, 3220M. And this one uh, does both at once. Now, this is where I should bring the notepad in because it's really important to note things like this. The IWIS tool came with an amazing set of instructions. You wouldn't think, oh, it's just a crimping tool. What set of instructions would it need? But it goes into detail. Whereas other crimping tools, like even my good ones here, just give you wire sizes. It's very vague. It just says it's for this particular wire range and it's obviously just aimed at one style of crimp. Because these are aimed at sort of universal crimps, uh, uh, multiple types, it's very adamant about saying that your crimp, when you look at the end of the crimp, this bit here, look at the end of it, as it comes out to your packet of crimps, they'll be splayed out sideways slightly. They say fold it up until it's vertical. And there is a wee bit on most of these tools for just squeezing it, but you can get a pair of pliers and squeeze it. And they say measure the distance from side to side and choose the correct one. It's it, Because it's kind of a universal crimping tool, instead of going by wire size, you're going by crimp width. And they do, uh, they show the parallel wings and they show the things that are good and the things that are bad. The crimp's too narrow. It's going to funnel it in like a horseshoe when it goes into there. You know, if that's the... Uh, crimping section, if your crimp is too wide and you try and funnel it in, it will end up be bellowing out like that. So it has to be parallel going into that. And also the other thing that could go wrong there with the, the golden arch is that if the crimp is too narrow, it can be sloppy. It can actually tip, tip in its side. So it has to be parallel to the sides of that. All useful stuff. It gives lots of really useful uh, information about the crimping and also the warnings about not over crimping it too much when you're initially gripping it so you don't fold it in too much to push the wire in. The other thing it's worth mentioning here with tools like this, uh, one that does both sides at once and indeed the iOS, is that inside that crimping tool you'll have the section that crimps the wire bit and then there'll be another section that's slightly wider that crimps the strain relief onto the insulation. So you have to, when you get your tool, and before you, each use, you have to really get a feel for this, 
you have to open up and look for the narrower section and the wider section so you kind of know which way around that uh, crimp goes. And also you have to get a feel for the position of the crimp within that so it is each corresponding bit is in the correct position. In my case with this tool, it's fairly easy because you close it down in that and you slide it up until the little locking tang touches the metal and then you've just one more click to grip it and then you can put the wire in and crimp it. Let me just crimp that wire mate as well. I've got it all the way so far. I mentioned before that I, when I got the first version of this crimping tool, because this is the one I've got over here, I've got one in Glasgow as well. Um, when I first got it, I hated it because I was expecting something that was idiot proof that you just shove the crimp into and then just shove the wire into and squeeze the handle and it goes and you can get those. The Molex uh, crimps, you can actually get a special tool that the crimp will only go in for X distance and then you put the wire in, it's got a little stop inside that will stop the wire at the right distance and stuff like that. But those tools cost hundreds of pounds for one tool. This one uh, is just a, uh, it's, you just have to get the feel for it of where the crimp was in. This is why when you first get your crimping tool, you have to just play with it and you have to check the crimps and you have to do things like this, you know, stick it into one of the housings and then just pull it and see, did you damage the wire or is the reason that came out there is because it locked in so tightly that the little tang has folded out. I used quite a lot of pressure. I did actually give that a real good pull. If the wire pops out, it's bad. If the, uh, the wire snaps, it's kind of bad as well because it looked like a good crimp, but the wire was physically damaged by being over crimped. Uh, so the, this tool, yeah. Okay, let's uh, crimp something in this. And again, none of these are suitable for the, for doing a single crimping action on the, uh, the DuPont type connectors. I don't think so. Let's uh, just double check that. So I've marked a wee green dot here. 1.6 is the winner again. The 1.6 relates to the uh, front section. The back section is just slightly wider for uh, allowing for the strain relief. If I put this in here, and it's not that easy. No, it's not going to go all the way. This is such a huge bit on it. Uh, on the other hand, when I put this crimp in, it seems to be absolutely perfect. You'll see oil on the finger now. These things came absolutely swimming with oil, but that's not a bad thing. Obviously, you don't want oil everywhere while you're working, but uh, uh, certainly versus the P09 Japanese one. Oop, let me get this in. Yeah, that uh, this one's jaws are narrow enough that you can actually see it better. The Both sides of that, you can actually see it's dead center. Let's uh, crimp a wire in there with these free wire strippers that came with uh, this tool here. So let's see if I can just stick that wire in there. Have I squeezed that too much? No, no, that's fine. And it releases. Things also worthy of mention, with any crimping tool, say for instance you're halfway through a crimp, and you realise it's not in the right position or it slips out of position, there's a little trigger under here. Just squeeze the handle slightly, lift that up, that's the ratchet, and it will open the tool again. It's worth mentioning that. Uh, which of these did I just do? I can't remember which of these I just did with this tool. Uh, hold on, I shall just give them a pull test. Yeah, that's good. Pull test. Yeah, that's good. It does a good job. Right, on to this one now, and I have to say that this is the one I recommend. This is the IWIS, and that's an IWIS too. IWIS seems to be a prominent Chinese brand that they make sensible tools. So this came from an eBay listing. Uh, let's see, price-wise. The complex one that actually has the parallel jaws that go up the way, quite a professional arrangement, it cost about just over £20 here in the UK. That was unusual. That The price range of all of these crimping tools is massive. You know, you can get one for £20. The same tool will be sold for £50. It's just all over the place in eBay. So it's worth checking, you know, lowest cost price and shipping first and seeing if you get, well, how do you know it's the original thing? But the target price for this one uh, here, if it suits you, is £25. 
The target price for the one that we're about to take a look at is £15, which makes it one of the most affordable crimping tools. This one actually cost me £20 because it came with the FSA uh, 0626 uh, wire strippers, which are the typical wire strippers that have just the multiple size uh, hole that you put the wire into and then strip it. It also comes with a cutting blade, but there's a slight, it looks, it almost looks like they've had a slight glitch at the factory or someone's tried to use one of these to cut a big wire. It's just got that slight damage to the blade in the middle. It was kind of part of a package. I'm not too bothered by it. It doesn't really matter, but yeah, a bit odd. It's also got little plier grips at the tip. These are both ergonomically shaped as well. They've got that slight angle to them. That means that when you, you know, your, your hand can be at a more comfortable angle for when you're actually working with it. But this one has, let's compare it to the extremely expensive, the most expensive uh, PA09 Japanese unit. This one has four positions, one millimeter, 1 1.4, 1 1.6 and 1.9. This one has 6, 0.7, 1, 1 1.3, 1 1.6, 1 1.9 and 2.2. In most instances, I've found that the connectors that I use, 1.6 is ideal for most of them. Ultimately, try whichever connector you're going to use, just measure it which one it's going to go into, and one point line for the restraining connection. Let's crimp a wire. Let's get the other end of this wire. The one that I completely mashed that crimp by doing it wrong. Excellent. So I shall strip that wire. This also incidentally works with the uh, not just the DuPont and the JYK Molexi tech connectors, it works with the GST um, what they call GST XH connector 2.5 millimeter pitch, 2.5 millimeter pitch being roughly 0.1 pitch, 0.1 inch pitch. Uh, I shouldn't twist those wires. That's a bit of a taboo thing. Let's get this, and I shall put it initially into the point 1.6 position, just to grip that wire into the where it's being crimped goes in easily. As I say, these are swimming with oil when you get them. I think that's actually an advantage because it does lubricate the contact surface between the crimp and the uh, and the tool. So crimp it down once and then because this is much longer, move it along and crimp it down the second time. And then the strain relief that goes around the uh, wire, the insulation, it goes in to the 1.9 position. You can squeeze them together with the tip of this tool if you want, just to nudge the wings together a bit if they're not going in easily, because they are usually supplied splayed. Then that goes in, crimps down, and that looks relatively good to me. Let's try it into the, uh, let's try it into one of the connectors. Oh, other way around, that, that would help. Oop. Actually, that has actually bent. No, that's not actually going to go in. I've just screwed that up again. As I say, every crimping tool is different and you'll have to get used to it. The DuPont connector has this really annoying thing that the back crimps are... The wings aren't parallel. They're actually ones up centred back the way and one slightly forward the way and they're designed to crisscross as they sort of bite in. So I kind of screwed that up there. Hold on, I'm just going to use a pair of pliers to mush that. That is so unprofessional. Or can I use the little thing at the tip to squeeze that? No, I can't. I had a feeling that was all going to go wrong. Uh, this is me recommending this tool, but I have to say the PA09 does exactly the same thing. The only difference is that we're at that as that crimp came out easily. Uh, with the PO9, it doesn't. Uh, right, anyway, I'm going to try one more crimp, and it's going to be the XH, the GST connector one, having screwed up the other one so royally. And the interesting thing about these, and it's quite an interesting thing, the crimps that go in here, it's quite a clever design. It's designed to save space and make the crimp very short, so it goes into that housing. I'm looking for my pen. Where's my pen? I've lost my pen. How have I lost my pen? Could it be because it's buried under loads of crimping tools? I'm making such a mess of this video. This occasion happens I've thrown it into my toolbox, that's why. Okay, 
Uh, the GST terminals are very interesting because to save space, they've got a box section at the front. And the box section has a little... Uh, it's got a tang coming down, but it's also got a spring going up like that, and that's the bit that the pin that's inserted actually rubs against, makes the connection. But then the actual restraint here has little wings that grab, grab the wire and the wings that grab the insulation. But when it's crimped down, they both get crimped down into this area here, and the pin can pass right through above those in the housing. It just means it saves space. The, the, wire, the, the area the wire is crimped is below the point that the pin actually goes into the housing. Let me see if I can successfully crimp one of these. I don't crimp many of these, so this may also go wrong. Thousands of the Molexy type crimps, very few of these. I've, I've not really had any cause to crimp these much. Uh, let us uh, get this tool and I shall attempt to crimp this. Let's see if I can actually not mess this up. Or maybe I should mess it up because it provides much more entertainment when I screw things up. And then because I never, ever hide stuff when I when things go wrong, they always get shown in this channel. It's embarrassing, but you know what? It's real life. It's what happens. It happens to you. It happens to me. So one advantage of this, the their crimping system of it, uh, the wire being under the crimp pin, is that you don't have to worry an awful lot about the wires going in too far. So that's uh, just gone into the crimping area. I have folded that round. Didn't take a lot of pressure. Into the 1.9, which is the next size up for the insulation bit. Let's uh, squeeze those little wings together a bit. And I shall align them up before crimping it. And quick squeeze and that has crimped that. Ugh. Oh God, I really have actually screwed it up again. Ah. Oh. Right, anyway, as I was saying, of all the tools I've tested, when things have been going well, uh, the one that has been the best for just simple use on a wide range of connectors is the IWS2820M. It's one of the most affordable. It is quite precisely engineered, and if you're using it properly, it does pretty good crimps. Uh, follow up. This one uh, did work on these, but let's hold on. I'm going to try that again. Let's see if I can screw another one up. Let's uh, put this one in here into this posh crimping tool. There's nothing quite like the pressure of making a video to make everything go wrong. It's a bit like Tomorrow's World. If you lived in the UK, uh, in that era, there was a sci-fi programme. Well, a sci-fi programme. It wasn't sci-fi. It was a science programme, a better way to describe it. And uh, it was called Tomorrow's World, and they demonstrated all its technology. But it was all done live. And so much went wrong. It was amazing. It was just half the fun of the show was the fact that presenters kept their cool, like Judith Han and the other uh, presenters would just tie on as if nothing had happened, but you could see in their faces, it was like, oh no, it's gone wrong again. Yeah, doing this under the pressure of making a video is absolutely not fun at all. Uh, I really need to get more practice in with these, although having said that, I would tend to use my preferred tool. Is that producing a good result? That has produced a perfect crimp. Uh, let's put that into one of the housings. I think this might actually be the one, the tool here that I'd use for the uh, GST type crimp since I've got it anyway. Let's slide that in. And it's clicked. Let's see what gives Oh, my fingers are giving... Ow! Uh, the tang gave, so that's good. That's a really good crimp. So, in short, despite the fact I've not done a very good job of actually presenting this in very good light, uh, I would say the preferred tool for on a budget is going to be something like this, the uh, IWS2820M. The more higher profile tool, you've got a choice for these style of crimps. The SN01BM did actually a decent job. I don't know what the tolerance will be like between different brands. 
And then this, one of the more expensive tools, but well, not the most expensive tool though, uh, the one that seems to have the most professionally machined tips here, uh, the IWS 3220M. It seems very good. It does actually list which connectors it's designed to work with. I've just misplaced that. Uh, let's see what it is. It lists it for use with Jam, Molex, Clickmate, Tyco D1000, GST, SHD, Molex, PicoBlade, Tyco D1000, and probably others as I've tested it with. But there we go. There's a huge range of crimping tools. Uh, whichever one you get, you're going to have to get a feel for it. There's no way around that. You're going to have to get used to using it because the more versatile ones just have that slight learning curve associated with them. And uh, once you've been using it for a while... As with this style of crimping tool when I first got it, as I say, it, until I twigged out how to put the, them in, I thought it was going to be fast. And the initial, the, the first crimps took so long and I screwed so many up that I was just really agitated at the beginning. But once you've sussed it, once you get used to using it, I can literally just stick a crimp in, close it down, pop the wire in and crimp and that's it done. And when you're making the props with like hundreds of these connections so they could be built into the props later on, your wiring limbs, uh, that kind of, you know, it, it took a long time, but it made sense to actually use the crimping tool and connectors like that. But uh, there we go. There's a huge range available. Some are shit and some are pretty good. Um, but the iWIS definitely impressed me. They uh, are definitely seem to be one of the better quality tools.